Greetings, Earthlings. This is your one and only Glitter Bitch. If you're on my plurk, you know why I just said that. And if you're not, you should probably be on my plurk because otherwise I'm just going to sound ridiculous. Hello, and welcome to tutorial number seven. My name is Diaper Ethwin Arbolo, and I am ridiculous. Today, we're going to be learning how to make hairlines softer on Second Life photos. This happens often when you've got sort of a swept back hairstyle, like the one in this photo, and it just doesn't look very natural. This happens a lot with mesh heads because the shape of Second Life heads and the shape of mesh heads are not always the same, and then you've got Second Life designers who understandably are making their hair for Second Life heads. So the fit is not always there, or maybe you just don't have a hair base that goes to the front of the hair. I am wearing uh, the Catwa Annie head, that's a mesh head in this photo, with a details skin and then the hair is from Murray and I think it's called Catherine. It was a free gift and I can't complain too much about the hairline not being natural because it was free. So we're going to use the smudge tool and probably the clone stamp tool to make this hairline look more natural. Mostly just the smudge tool though. So smudge tools over here below the fill tool. It probably will start out as the blur tool, so you'll need to hold this and pull the menu up and select smudge tool. When you have the little finger that looks like it's poking something, that's the right tool. So now we need to choose our brush. Our brush is going to be a really small brush. I would say you probably will want to be between 1 and 10 pixels in size. So mine's about 7 pixels. Um, and I'm just doing, I actually probably would do a smaller brush if I was not trying to show you guys this quickly as opposed to taking hours retouching hair. Also you want your hardness to be at, at or around zero because you don't want super hard edges on your hair. My strength is at 55%, you want to probably be between 50 and 60%, mode is normal, we do not have anything else checked. One of the most important things about retouching hairlines is you need to go with the direction of the hair. Let me increase my... I'm going to increase this so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so if... You never want to smudge with this high of a brush, but if I smudge in the wrong direction... So see my hair is going sort of in a slightly angled swoop. If I go straight up and down... I'm going to move these lines incorrectly. We don't want to do that. We want them to look as natural as possible. So we do not want to have such a uh, unnatural, blurry, messed up line. It's almost like when you liquefy something uh, incorrectly, it's just not going to look good. So let's reduce this. We're going to just put it at like 10. Make it easier. Uh, normally I would do this smaller, but I want you guys to be able to see the actual work I'm doing. So this is probably not going to be perfect because I'm doing this I, I don't want to take all of your time to do this but as you see me doing here uh, maybe that's a little too big. Alright let's reduce this to seven. Okay. Alright so I've got my brush size at seven. We're going to click and hold the smudge tool and pull up and down. We're going to go up and down in the direction of the hair, pulling the skin and the hair back and forth. So here we'll just take this one single area and we're going to go back and forth with the hair and the skin. And you can, if you find you have too much of one going in one direction, you can just pull the skin or the hair in one direction. So if I want to pull the hair down a little bit, I can just pull the hair down by holding and clicking. If I want to pull the skin up, I pull the skin up, holding and clicking and dragging. Okay, so let's look at what we had before in that one strand. That was the strand before. Now that we've smudged it, it looks like that. And you're going to be doing this across all of the hard edges on the hair. And it's going to take some time to do it properly. And we want to follow the direction of the hair. So see, this hair direction is slightly angled. So we're going to follow that direction of the hair. And we want to pull some skin up probably to make it look natural. Drag the skin up into the hair. Here we're going to do the same thing. If you're really lazy, you could just go straight across all of your, your hairline. It'll go faster, but it won't look as natural. See, we're, as we pull the hair up, we start getting sort of the that hairline effect that you see. Um, it almost kind of looks like your hair bases. 
All right, so let's look at the original. Hard lines, smudge tool, hard lines are gone. So you're going to do the same thing all over. Always following the direction of the hair. So if the hair is slightly angled, you will do your dragging slightly angled. Anywhere that there is hard lines, you're going to do this effect. And you can pull the skin up into it, make it look more natural. Hard lines are going away, slowly but surely. And we're going to keep doing that everywhere. This is probably going to be one of the most boring tutorials I do because it involves a lot of just doing the same thing over and over. Clicking and dragging the skin up into the hair, zigzagging the skin up into the hair, trying to follow the lines of the hair so that we don't end up with unattractive blurring. Anywhere that you have hard edges, you're going to follow the lines of the hair. Follow the lines of the hair, following, following, all those hard edges, getting them gone. Get, get, get it away, no more hard edges. It's harder when you start getting into the side swept sort of areas. So here you see I've got these side swept areas. More difficult to make look natural. Because it's cro the hair is crossing. Never cross the streams. They said it in Ghostbusters and it's true in real life. This is probably the most ridiculous tutorial I've ever spoken on. Not the actual <laughs> work that I'm doing, but what I'm saying. But that's okay. I don't mind being ridiculous. Okay, so we are pulling the hair and the skin into one another to make those lines go away. And we are going, as I said several times already, in the direction of the hair. If you don't, it starts to look really ugly. And we don't want to have ugly avatars. That's the whole point of doing these pretty photos. Okay, so we are getting rid of all these hard lines. I have done some poor work in some areas of this, but I'm working fast so that you guys don't have to sit here forever and listen to me yammer on. Okay, so we've... Oh, too funny. See, I, I went the wrong direction here. You see what happened to that? It looks so unnatural. So we have to be careful of that. If you see yourself doing that, you need to take a step back. It happens most often when rushing is going on, when you're rushing things. So you have to, this is something that you have to expect you're going to take a lot of time on. Because it just, in order for it to look really natural, it just takes time. See again, wrong direction. I'm being a very naughty brush person today. I am not doing this as cleanly as I normally would. But you can see the lines are getting out of the way. All over the place. We're getting the lines out of the way. We're getting the lines out of the way. I'm just going to speed this up by... I'm going to do this lazily in the corner here just because I'm trying to move on. Okay, so let's zoom out. We'll fit this, this view on fit screen. Okay, so I've got these lines have been turned into a more natural look. So let's look at the original. Here's the original, all these hard lines. You can see all of this, not cool looking. After we've done the smudge tool, it looks much more natural. If you find that you have made some really bad mistakes or your hair looks really blurry, you can use your clone stamp tool to copy some hair type of shape from up here and put it in the areas that are too blurry. And mine actually doesn't look too bad, but I'm going to show you anyway. So here, the clone stamp tool, I'm, I've got my brush size at about 55%. Basically, you want it to be the size of a small section of hair. My opacity is always going to be pretty low. Definitely left less than 50%. I would say around 30% is probably good. My hardness is at zero, as usual. I'm going to click Alt, and it's going to bring up the uh, little focus tool. It's going to choose a section to select. So actually, let's do this on the side where it doesn't look as natural. So we're going to select the hair from up here, above where I've done my work, and we're going to go straight down to the hairline area. And we're going to just click 
and drag some of the hair from above. And you have to be careful with this because if you do it incorrectly, like I just did, you will either pull pull sections that you didn't intend to pull or you will make strong lines. That's why we use our opacity low. So I'm, I've selected an area and I'm going over the area. So let's look at what it looked like before and what it looks like now. And this is not the perfect example, but you can see the concept here. So we're taking pieces of hair and we are dragging it along where the parts don't look very natural. Let's view on screen. Okay, so this has become more soft. Here's the original, here's after it's become more soft. And this is not the finest work that I could do, but this is the finest work I could do in such a short amount of time. So here's the original, here's what it looks like after you've softened it. So it gives you a general idea and it gives you the tools that you need to do this on your own. You may want to use smaller brushes than I used and do more minute work, but this is still going to be much better than these hard, hard edges. So there you go. That is a quicker way to do smudging naturally on the hairline. There are other ways to do this, but most of them involve more complicated, advanced uh, Photoshop uh, experience, and we don't all have that. So this is a way that you can do this on your own without uh, tons of trying to hand paint. So there you go. Thank you for joining me. If you have questions or comments, you can leave them on the YouTube video or you can put them, uh, you can send them to me on Plurk or in Second Life. Thank you for joining me. I'll catch you next time.